from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Hey, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and we are live in the NetApp booth at SAP Sapphire 2018. We're joined by Robert Stump, Senior Director of IT Enterprise Solution Delivery. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. So we're here at, in the NetApp booth at Sapphire Now. As they said in the keynote this morning, um, they're expecting a million people to engage with SAP Sapphire this yes. week. I think, I've heard rumblings, there's about 20 plus thousand people here in attendance. Yep. Huge event, huge show, lots of announcements. Let's talk about NetApp and SAP as partners, specifically in the context of the next gen data center. Sure. Uh, bringing cloud ready solutions to business applications. What are you guys yep. doing there with SAP? Sure, I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, the, the NetApp solutions fit into the next generation data center in a variety of different ways. We have the all-fast flash that really is the, the core of our uh, product base and is really the workhorse of all of the uh, hardcore applications. Gives you really uh, strong performance in the, the storage area. Uh, then we have the cloud volumes, which when you want to scale out to a hyperscaler, and you can use the cloud volumes uh, uh, abilities there. And then when you look at our HDI components, it is capable of, of giving you a lot more of the uh, container-based uh, compute power. So we fit into a variety of different components there. So Robert, we're at SAP, and SAP hasn't been traditionally known as a cloud-aware application. Tell us. From the NetApp perspective, what's changed with SAP over the years that now you can comfortably talk about SAP as a cloud-aware application? So SAP's uh, moving a long way in that direction. You saw this morning in the keynote that they were talking about the C4, uh, their customer-focused applications. Uh, that's really kind of putting a framework on top of all of the customer engagements and making the customer the center of everything. So they're, they're moving a lot in that direction. Uh, we at NetApp have implemented their Hybris platform, their uh, customer, cloud for customer application. Uh, we just went live with that last year. So we're on that journey with SAP as well. So as we talk about that, what makes the application, or what makes applications in general cloud aware? Okay, when you, when you look at a, a making something cloud aware, you want to really look at the architecture that you have underneath it. Uh, so you, you'll build something that has a lot more automation in it, a lot more scalable, uh, where you don't, you don't have to, the, scale, the scalability is built into the framework that you're leveraging. Uh, in the case of our NetApp support site, which we just completely re-architected and went live last month, we have built that on what's called a, a meme stack, so that's with the Mongo database on the back end, it's a non-SQL database, and then on top of uh, Angular and Node.js, which uh, gives you a much more robust framework for you to be able to scale out your application. So with it being a website, and, and it's, um, you, your volume can go up and down, so you want to be able to scale the application without needing people to get involved in that scaling. So they, they will just fire up new containers that needed as the volume increases, and it's a lot more robust than uh, architecture. So as we look at hybrids and we look at NetApp products and solutions, that framework and architecture, can you paint a picture for us what NetApp solutions and products are cloud aware? Sure, the uh, uh, Cloudware applications really, uh, you need to look at the, the complete stack of the, the next generation of data center, which is really embodying the on-prem data center, your hyperscaler cloud uh, data centers, and then a, a private cloud if you so wish to build one. So the, the next generation data center take a, takes advantage of the all fans flash on your on-prem solution. So you've got your performance, high performance, scalability, uh, then your uh, cloud volumes allows you to move your data between your on-prem to out to the hyperscaler as you need to. And the HCI component gives you that container-based compute, uh, compute array that allows the, the applications to scale. Also, you can leverage Storage Grid, which is much more of an object-based uh, database, um, which is something that you'll use extensively on cloud-aware applications. So, thanks Keith. So, one of the things that was announced this morning, you mentioned C4 HANA, where Bill McDermott was sort of expected to announce what SAP was going to be doing that's going to help differentiate them. They want you know, more share from Salesforce and Oracle. Yes. He, he made kind of some aloof references to that. But one of the things that he talked about was co companies need in this 
day and age speed, obviously, but to move away from a 360 degree view of sales automation to an actual 360 degree view of the customer. Yes. I'd love to get your insight on NetApp and SAP as partners together. Are you seeing any particular industries leading here? We, you know, we think of like manufacturing, maybe automotive, oil and gas, but I'm just wondering if from NetApp's perspective, are you seeing any industries that are really leading edge here in, in evolving to a next gen data center that enables this 360 degree view? It, there, there's a variety of different industries that are doing that. If you take uh, take a look at applications like um, Netflix and Amazon um, Prime, those those applications are architectured to be um, uh, to be scalable and to be uh, uh, to be much more robust, and they're much more focused on the customer. And they, they, because you you don't have outages, right? You're not. They don't take the system offline when they're doing an upgrade to their capabilities. When was the last time you heard of Netflix going offline for 12 hours to do an upgrade? So these applications are built much more robustly around that, and that's what one thing that we're looking to do at NetApp with the, the Hybris implementation that we did with, uh, with F SAP, and we're also upgrading our back office CRM system to their CRM on HANA on-prem, and we're going to be taking advantage of the Hybris uh, capabilities there to give that full picture of the, the customer. We'll be heavily engaged with, uh, with SAP on their C4 journey and making sure that we are uh, part of that as well. So it's great that you brought up Netflix as an example of a continuously operating environment that has this huge back end, automated with technology. SAP traditionally hasn't been considered a technology that you could upgrade on the fly. You know, I've, I've, <laughs> I, I managed the SAP environment where we could only take 12, year, 12 hours of downtime a year because mission critical. Right. Yes. It's very difficult to get that time. Yes. How has the NetApp data fabric story played into making that a possibility in your own environment and customers environments? Okay, we, we leverage a lot of the NetApp storage on our on-prem system. I'm in exactly the same situation as you were talking about. We have a lot of mission critical customers that are on our support application. I have to give 90 days notice to take the system down for any longer than four hours at a time. So I'm in that very similar situation. So we leverage a lot of the NetApp technologies to make sure that the applications are available when I'm doing the upgrades. And so that we're, and we can do rapid copies of, of the the data that's in there. Make sure it's all robust. Our data um, failover database, failover systems are set up that way, so that they take advantage of the snapshots that we got from the application. Um, and we're working with SAP. Their the SAP Hybris application is actually built on top of NetApp Storage, and we're working very closely with SAP to rearchitect their application to take advantage of the capabilities that NetApp Storage brings to the equation. So NetApp is coming into its own in this um, hybrid cloud model. NetApp's been around 26 years, right? Long time. Um, but now it's everything is speed, right? You, you, met, you mentioned Netflix, and I don't know anybody on the planet that would survive if NetApp, Netflix went down right. for an hour, exactly. let alone 12. Yeah. So speed, access to data. But this evolution of NetApp, I'm, I'm interested in. You know, now again in this hybrid cloud model. You guys made your name from building network attached storage on-prem data centers. The announcement with, with what? Um, Google platform, cloud platform yep. just last week. Talk to us about some of the evolution from NetApp's, from your perspective, from a storage perspective, into really facilitating this hybrid cloud model. Sure, we, we're really at the forefront of that because at the end of the day, it's all about the data, right? Your application can run wherever you want, but wherever your data is, is really the key. And that's the, the framework that we're putting in place, is to be, make your data a lot more mobile. So if you want to keep the data on premise, then you can keep it on premise. If you want to move it out to the and next to the hyperscaler, you can burst it out, you can use the cloud volumes and, and migrate the data. So the, the NetApp picture, the story is really in making your data much more mobile and moving it to the location of choice for any particular workload that you're looking for. So we can't have a discussion in 2018 about data without talking about privacy and security What's the relationship in ensuring that NetApp and SAP is one, meeting requirements, GDPR, we, we have to talk about GDPR, and we have to talk about security. How is NetApp securing data and ensuring that uh, end users and organizations' data stay private? It's a very good question, right? It's definitely a challenge that a lot of companies are struggling with, and the, the, the 
tools that NetApp provides with our storage systems are paramount, security is paramount. And that's something that we're very much focused on and making sure that your data is, is your data and you, the specific components of the data that you want to keep on premise, which you want to keep uh, much more secure, then you, you can keep that on the, the NetApp um, all faz flash uh, storage systems and then it's, it's, you protect it as if it's in your own, your own kingdom. But then the, the data that's a little bit more uh, lax on the security side, then you can push that out into the, uh, the hyperscalers and use the NetApp cloud volumes to, be, to have it uh, outside of your, your own premise, you outside of your own firewall. So one of the basic things as a ONTAP customer that ONTAP customers depend on in the private data centers, the, this ability to encrypt data on the fly. Yep. Now that we look at, you know, we see on tap in the cloud, do we get that same basic capability to encrypt data on the fly or encrypt data while it's in transit? What, how do I know my data is protected from an encryption perspective? The, the, you get the same capabilities with it when you're using the on-cloud uh, uh, tools that we provide. Uh, so there's no real difference in that, and that's the beauty behind it. You're using the same storage management tools for your cloud volumes as you would be for your on-prem systems. Um, I want to ask a question on competition. There's a, there's a lot of co-opetition that's going on just at, at Sapphire alone. Yeah. With what you talked about, about how NetApp is, is uh, leveraging hybrid dimension to really kind of get towards that model of of um, connecting supply chain with demand, getting that full view of customers, SAP partners with probably all of your competitors. So how is what NetApp is doing internally to digitally transform, how do you see it as giving NetApp that competitive edge against the other guys? Okay, the way that we look at our competitive edge at, at NetApp from an application standpoint is really focusing on keeping our core capabilities very, very vanilla. So in the implementation with Hybris, we were very much focused on not customizing the application. But because at the end of the day, you, you sell stuff, you build stuff, you manufacture it, and you support it. So those are the core capabilities, and we, we kept that very vanilla uh, as much as possible within the, the implementation. Where we differentiate, that's where we customize. So our application landscape is much more focused on customizing for the differentiating capabilities, and that's the, the component that's specific to NetApp and how we do business, and that's the, the way that we'll go about differentiating ourselves from our competitors. So we use the core capabilities of all of the, the enterprise applications that we have, uh, in, that, we, that we purchase, such as Hybris, and then we, we go build our custom solutions that are the differentiator that really, such as um, our ASAP auto support system that gets, you know, was embedded right from day one. That's a custom built application, very proprietary. It's really the keys to the kingdom for our organization. And that's something that's very, very uh, integral as part of the, the NetApp culture. So let's talk about some lessons learned from that. One of the pain points for many SAP customers as they look at capability like ECC on HANA, really want it, but they've customized their environment too much. Yep. So making that switch is extremely difficult for them. What have you learned as a team that says, you know what, the best way to stay in line with SAP and follow that roadmap for mission critical applications that are, that are both stable and differentiating, you should follow these basic policies from a hygiene perspective. Sure, we, we actually went through that last year with our uh, project where we replaced our Salesforce automa uh, automation system and we implemented C4, uh, C4C C4 um, Hybris. So the key to that is really getting the executive sponsorship bought in to making sure that you're adhering to the vanilla applications, not customizing it. So we were very fortunate where we had uh, Henri Richard and Bill Miller, our CIO, they were the executive sponsors of the project, and they were adamant that we would not customize the application. And we went through, we took us six months to replace our CRM system, front office CRM system. Very proud of that project. It was an incredibly painful journey to go through, but it, the, the benefits that we got out of the end of it are phenomenal, because we were in that situation where we had an overly custom a uh, SaaS application that was running our sales organization that really wasn't meeting the needs of the business. Now we have a much more agile uh, implementation that's on top of SAP's uh, Hybris platform and we're taking advantage of the new capabilities they introduce rather than focusing on, on our own customizations. That's a great summary. I think you articulated very well what 
one of the themes was from Bell McDermott's keynote this morning is you know making things simple. Yes. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's critical. And there's it's so totally many critical. business outcomes that, that can come out of that, right? Not just streamlining processes, improving sales and marketing, and connecting them together, but really affecting revenue, profit, share. Yes. Etc. So, Robert, thanks so much for stopping by the Cube and chatting with Keith and me today about what you guys are doing with SAP. Great, thank you. Thank you for your time. We want to thank you. You're watching the Cube, Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend from SAP Sapphire 2018. Thanks for watching.